All right, we're going to be looking at a car stereo out of a 1982 DeLorean. This is owned by a friend of mine, Chris Dietrich. Um, he has a, a really nice 1982 DeLorean that he has fully restored, and uh, I'll try to put a link to a video of his uh, car up in the uh, video there. And he would like to have this radio restored as far as the tape player is concerned. Um, it does work. The belt was just bad. It's really kind of, it's really not that bad for how old the radio is. It still has a little bit of uh, elasticity to it, uh, but it has stretched a little bit uh, to the point where it doesn't really uh, run that good. There are uh, some little rubber wheels in here that need to be cleaned. I've already taken the old belt off. Other than that, the radio did work. Uh, so really, we're just going to be kind of cleaning it up and putting a new belt in there. Now, the uh, worst thing about these radios uh, is how to get the belt out. Uh, and I'll show why. On this particular model, and this is loose because I've already taken everything loose enough to get the old belt out to kind of sneak it out, but... On this particular model, as you can see, it's got all these little ribbon cables that go to the front display up here and all the buttons that is just straight across this plate. And under this plate is where the uh, flywheels are for the uh, tape deck. Right here is the pulley for the motor. And in order to get underneath this, we're going to have to take at least these three ribbon cables off. I think I might be able to pull these up far enough to be able to get it up. In order to clean underneath there and actually get the belt on properly, uh, to get the old one out, you know, you can just kind of sneak it out, but eventually you're just going to have to take all this out anyway. I think I may be able to leave these in place. Well, let's get started. I'm going to start by uh, desoldering all these connections here and be sure to get that and focus good there because I may need to refer back to this to get them back in although they are pretty much just lined up these are the main ones that I'm concerned with here and um, I may go ahead and mark these in a way so that I'll know that that one is first I'm kind of looking around for my sharpie that I cannot find I'm gonna pause this and I'll come right back to it All right, I'm just going to mark this with a one here to Turn those wires up like that. All right, just fold those wires up like that. This way when I go to solder them back on, all I have to do is just put a little bit of flux down and then uh, solder them right back with what's there. No need to take all that solder off and put more back on. Now this is kind of odd the way they did this. There's a couple little springs that attach here on the sides. I've already taken the one that goes off right there. But there's another one on this side. I've got a little bit of uh, glue on there to keep them from popping off. Okay, I'm just going to let that go back down in there. We'll work on getting that spring back up later. I think I can now just ease this plate up out of here without having to worry too much about these wires over here. 
Let's be careful with them. We don't want to rip any off. There we go. And normally these parts right here, um, they'll need to have a little bit of grease put back on them. They're kind of dry. And uh, I use a uh, lubricant plate uh, grease that I've probably used it for, geez, probably over 20 years now, at least. And uh, it's always worked really well. I used it in VCRs and tape decks and all sorts of things. Now, you don't want to go crazy with grease. You just, on any of these things, just a little little bit here and here, uh, just where it sits on those little uh, plastic parts right there. And uh, the grease that I've got uh, is this here, and it is a humongous uh, tube of it, which probably don't need one that big, but it's a number 105, and this, uh, this grease is really good. It stays uh, soft for a long period of time. I've never had any trouble with it getting hard or anything. And uh, these are the flaw wheels here. We can actually lift these completely out, and... Uh, then we can clean off the capstans here. You can see how much uh, buildup is actually on there. And we'll just clean that off with some uh, alcohol. Go ahead and take this other one out here. That way when I flip the radio over, it's not just gonna fall out anyway. And as you can see, this one's the same way really really dirty there I don't know if they see it better like that I'm trying to stay in focus yeah and this this over here is the new belt by the way I'm just gonna clean these rubber tires up uh, they're actually believe it or not in decent shape uh, they are not cracked in any way uh, they're just a little bit dirty so um, as far as that functionality of the radio went, it did rewind and fast forward and everything. Uh, so I'm just going to clean those up and let those go. And I'm going to get down in here with some Q-tips and clean all this. You can see is really pretty dirty. Um, of course, that's what you'd expect from a an 82 DeLorean or any 82 model car. But degree and the pinch rollers they can use a little bit of cleaning there too but overall this radio is in very good shape let's clean this uh, pulley here and get some uh, alcohol and we'll continue with that all right I'm just gonna clean all the rubber and everything here Surprisingly, all the uh, rubber here is actually in good shape, which is a good thing because I'm not really sure where I could get all these idler tires at this point. I'll make sure that all the, the pulleys are clean here. down inside the top part is a little extra dirty because all the the dust and everything that can fall down in there whoops It's hard, hard to see in the video.
All right, I'm gonna get the belt on now. And go up around this flywheel. Around the corner of that one. And then around the pulley on the motor. Make sure it's not twisted. Looks like we got a good fit. All right, I'm just gonna need to start soldering all these wires back down and uh, put a little bit of that grease in there. All right, I'm gonna get this uh, cover back on the flywheel. Put a little bit of grease on those uh, plastic pads there that the uh, flywheels ride on. This is one of those places you don't want to go crazy with grease. You just put enough on there just to keep it from being dry. And that should do it. It's a little tricky getting that back down in there and you could take all those wires off. Um, I just don't really see the necessity to do that. Let's see if I can raise that up to get that down under that board there. Try to sneak these screws back down in there. I may actually try to get the other ones in the sides first because I may have to move this around a little bit. both of these and I'll get it down in there. And come back and tighten these screws a little bit later after I get that other one in.
All right, I went ahead and tightened up those uh, other screws. It was a little bit difficult, so. Now I'm going to get these little springs back down in there. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm using a hook, the same one I used for the belts to uh, pull these springs back down. And these actually hook right into the frame here. that one there and that helps lower the tape into the mechanism let's see if I can get this one here it's not really the easiest thing to do the way that they made this Okay, managed to get that other spring in there. It was just a little bit hard to do to try to get it on the uh, video and hook it in, so I just did that separately. And I'm gonna go ahead and solder all these uh, little wires back on here. In order to do that, I'm just gonna add a little bit of, oops, get it on camera here first. A little bit of flux to all these connections here to make them a little bit easier to solder. And I may actually not have to put any more solder on there. Um, let's see. Let me try to zoom in here some. It's going pretty good there. A little bit more flux here. Piece of solder popped loose. <laughs> Probably should get a fume extractor, but I'm actually not over it, so it'll be okay. Touch this orange one up here a little bit. I don't. I don't like the way it looks. There we go, much better. And continue on. Make sure I still got that in frame. Just start from this end too. Okay, we got both of them. Oh, oh.
Alrighty. I think that looks pretty good. I clean that off a little bit even though it's no clean flux, but I always like to give it a little cleaning in just to make sure. See that blue one? I don't like the way it looks. I'm going to touch it up again. Alright. There we go. Try to line these back up somewhat the way they were. Even from the factory, they're kind of laying on top of each other and twisted. Uh, it's just kind of how they did things in the 80s. Alright, let's see. You can see how this one originally was across that and the tape was going across the uh, the wire like this here. So just try to put it back the way it was. Get that wire up out of the uh, spring there. And that piece actually doesn't move, so that's good. gonna put a little piece of tape across this here to hold that down. It's looking pretty good. Zoom back a little and get some power to this radio here. One thing you want to be careful of is there's two red wires. And this red wire is for the speakers, so you don't want to accidentally hook 12 volts in there and end up blowing out your audio output so just keep in mind it's these two here that are the uh, power okay i'm just gonna simulate a tape going in turn the radio on help if i put some power to it push that down there too okay it's rotating that way and you push the volume knob and it reverses now it's going to automatically revert back because it senses that this spindle is not turning because there's not an actual tape in there um, I can actually simulate a tape being in if I just turn this back and forth there is actually um, a reed switch under this spindle and uh, it has a very small magnet on the, the spindle that senses when it goes past. Uh, some of the, the newer radios, I'll just stop and it'll automatically revert. Uh, a lot of the, the newer style uh, tape decks had a uh, Hall Effect switch. This one is actually older and uh, has the actual um, reed switches. And if you're, probably can't hear it on the video, but there's a very, very slight... Uh, noise that you can hear when the reed switch opens and closes but it has to be very quiet in the room to hear that but anyway it's just kind of a fun fact um okay i'll eject the tape and uh 
So we got the front on here. And preset buttons working. This is actually not flickering, that's just the video showing that. It's kind of cool how even back in the 80s they had the uh, lights would turn different colors. It would go from orange to green when you hit the preset buttons. You had metal tape, uh, which actually functions as to switch between the clock and the station. Um, loud, loudness, AM, FM. This is your Dolby, which that also serves the same function in the tuner mode if it just goes between the clock and the radio. But um, that's local and distant, so if you had a uh, station that was really close to you, you wouldn't you know, need the... Uh, you might get some multipath or something going on so you could hit that button and uh, help with that on the FM. Go ahead and turn that off. And uh, let me get a, a test tape in here and uh, we'll see uh, what's going on. All right, I got this thing hooked up to 12 volts here and we're gonna put a test tape. This is a uh, three kilohertz tone that um, I can check the speed with. And let's see here. Yeah, it looks to be right at three kilohertz. And we'll show you on my meter here. If you can see that. I'm jumping around just a little bit. This has a little bit of a uh, flutter to it, which I'm not surprised. Um, this radio being that old but the speed is pretty much dead on these particular stereos had a uh, regulator inside the motor uh, so it's not really adjustable externally uh, some have a little pot on the board uh, you know later on uh, radios would have that uh, to adjust the speed but a lot of these had a internal um, governor in the motor that would set the speed and they usually stay pretty pretty solid as far as the uh, speed goes, so there's not really any adjustment that you can do there. Uh, let me try to find a, a tape that I can put in there that won't uh, trigger any copyrights on uh, YouTube, and I'll throw that in there. All right, I got a tape here I can play a little bit of. Sounds pretty good. Well, I think that's about it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and like, comment. Uh, if there's anything that you'd like to see, uh, please leave it down in the comments. And um, I think that's about it for now. Thanks for watching.